Before the Tiger King, there was Roar. I'm Rebecca Lieb. I'm Jason Horton. And this is Ghost Town. I'm not going to kill those cats. You can tell me what you're going to do, and you can tell me what the rest of this committee is going to do. But I'll be damned if you're going to tell me what I'm going to do. That's why you have to help me. He could get killed. I can go on any property to kill animals that I deem are a danger to human life. I'm telling you there'll be no telling of cats, elephants, or any animals ever again. What are you trying to prove? That you can have lions socializing with people? No, but we can't keep exterminating. We can't keep exterminating everything that we fear that inconveniences us. Let the zoos keep them alive. We're going to talk about the most dangerous movie ever made and then somebody getting eaten yeah someone getting mauled we were just talking about the documentary the tiger king yes we were we both started watching it we're both on episode two yeah episode two um which was just the beginning yeah right they're they're teasing things to happen but it's about competing uh essentially private zoos, right? And then a non-for-profit big cat sanctuary. And if you... Everybody is weird. Everyone is not only weird, but just completely fucking bonkers. Yeah. Like, there's no... There's nary a person who's not insane. Even the person I thought was the least insane, the, well, the, the producer of his TV show, I'm like, you used to work on, like, real TV, and now you're, like, you're drinking this fucker's Kool-Aid. But there's one video of him getting set on fire. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So if you're looking for those documentaries that uh, where every main character and there's a lot of them Mm -hmm. is really, really unique and has a backstory. Mm -hmm. Because I was like, there's like seven, six, seven episodes of this. Yeah. Only a number two. Yeah. And I'm already like, I like lost my mind multiple times. I was like, it can't get corrupt. Okay. Excuse me? Well, before the Tiger King could walk roar had to crawl that's right is that how that goes that is verbatim that's actually that's perfect and we saw a the re-release of roar yes we saw it many years 2014 i think at 14 Cinefam or 50 yeah 14 yeah. or 15 uh we went to a screening of it and i i think i was so the the trailer of it is so nuts that I was like, I, I got, I think I got a group together. I think it was like 20 of us going to see this movie. And we're all like, whoa. Because it is completely, there's no real, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'll let we'll, you get into it. I feel we'll like I'm very it. excited about it. It did cause me a lot of anxiety watching it. Mm-hmm. Because you know what went into it and it is, you know, there's, there's no faking it. It mm-hmm. was very real. And if you are, need a companion piece to... The Tiger King, if you're watching mm-hmm. it, or if you just want More. something absolutely insane to watch. Mm-hmm. If you love people who are not well educated under any authority, who like to hang out with big cats, then you're gonna really be into this. You might, yeah, you might, you might like this, and there might be some familiar names that mm-hmm. you might have heard. That's right. So we're gonna stay in 1981. Mm-hmm. We just had an episode in 1981 with the Brinks. Robbery. 1981. And let's coast through it. It's, it's a it's a, a really great year for insanity. And it was in production for 11 years. Which in 1981, is, mm-hmm. the whole thing started in 1969. So it wasn't like, you know what? Let's just make a movie. Mm-hmm. And things went wrong. This was 11 years in the making. So yeah. really no excuse for what happened. Yeah. I also think it's interesting that you brought up doing this episode before the Tiger King even came out. Previous. Well, you know, I didn't. This episode on Strange Year, mm-hmm. another podcast, but 
since Tiger King came out and we were talking about it, I was like, let's, must, we have to, we got to separate this out. We got to parse this and make yeah, it an episode. It's just, it's just, it's, just, it's fortuitous, I yes, guess, absolutely. That, that the Tiger King came out. Mm-hmm. And producer director Noel Marshall, who's a producer on The Exorcist, mm-hmm. you know, had some clout. Yeah. His wife, Tippi Hedren mm-hmm. from The Birds. That's right. Okay. Their sons, John and Jerry, and daughter, Melanie Griffith. Heard of her? No? Okay, we'll look her up then. I don't have to tell you. <laughs> in their regular life, lived, ate, and slept with 150 lions, tigers, cheetahs, jaguars, and their Sherman Oaks, California home. Yeah. Which is, what, 20 minutes north of us? Half hour yeah. north of us? It is a, it's an urban place. We're not talking about, like, some weird, like, you know, up in the hills. So in a canyon. A, as kind of a response to poaching, mm-hmm. and as animal lovers, they're like, listen, there's what better, better way to do it than put our star power together mm-hmm. and our money together and our lover animals together and make a movie. Mm-hmm. So pre-production began in 1970 and filming began in 1976 and was completed in 1979, released in 1981. There's mm-hmm. a timeline. It was, from the beginning, it was pretty pretty cursed. Mm-hmm. Uh, financial difficulties, they sold, this is Noel Marshall and Tippi Hedren, sold almost everything they had to finance it. And then horrific random plagues, floods, wildfire, disease... And that's not even including the awful injuries from w- w- making a movie mm-hmm. where your co-stars is a big freaking cheetah. Yeah, that's right. With <laughs> a giant three inch long like claws and teeth. And I don't think a lot of them wanted to be in a movie. It's no. almost kind of like they weren't made to be actors in movies. <laughs> that's so crazy that you say that. These giant... 300 pound animals uh, weren't supposed to be uh, tools for entertainment. I don't know. I don't know. Who's so crazy. But even the, the trailer is uncomfortable. Like everything about this film is uncomfortable. The storyline, again, as I remember, the story is, is all over the place. It was actually really hard. I was, it's really very boring to watch. I thought it was Mm -hmm. kind of boring to watch. I was so tense, though. What is boredom when you're so tense that you think Melanie Griffith's face is going to come off via a lion? You know, like, what is entertainment to you, I yeah, guess? Then, then, right. Yeah. It's also in a giant tree house. Like, their house looks like it's very 70s, a lot of, like, wicker and, like, macrame stuff. And then 14 lions. And then you have other actors in it that are just kind of, you can tell like, uh, it's like doing a movie at gunpoint yeah it's exactly. like everyone's at gunpoint they're all like about to call their union being like this is i can't do this and the union ma- master's like you, you gotta pay your mortgage right and they're like i guess i will be in the scene with this lion well the union master is a saber tooth tiger so <laughs> that's true he knows how to use the phone though, <laughs> he's old great. he's an old dude <laughs> so some of the injuries um cinematographer jean de bont was scalped <laughs> Wendy, I don't mean to laugh. It's just, of course he was. You know that old thing when you're in a movie and you get scalped? Melanie Griffith, mauled by a lion. <laughs> 220 stitches. She was also like 14 in yeah. this movie, and yes. she's tiny. Uh, and required facial reconstructive surgery. An AD narrowly escaped death when a lion missed his jugular by an inch. Well, Still got attacked. It was yeah, not like yeah. he missed him like, completely. He just didn't die instantly. Yes. Tippi Hedren, who was attacked by the birds on the set of the birds, had a fractured leg, multiple scalp wounds, and Noel Marshall, the producer and director, was wounded so many times he was hospitalized with gangrene. Whoa. Today's episode is brought to you by Best Fiends. Best Fiends is a puzzle game that you can play right on your phone. It's really cool. You go through all these levels, solving challenging puzzles that actually engage your brain, but at the same time, it's casual, it's fun, it's pretty addicting. It is unique and exciting. It's an experience unlike any other puzzle game out there. I swear, it updates the game monthly with new levels and events, so it never gets old. Best Fiends does not require the internet. I play it everywhere. I play it at work when I'm not supposed to. I play it when I'm taking the metro. Nothing works down there except for Best Fiends. It is a fun game. You play with bugs against slugs. They're updating levels all of the time. It's just a great way to pass the time and be mentally stimulated. I'm now on level 203, trying to catch up to my wife, Michelle. She is almost on level 600. So I feel like the gap is closing. Mm-hmm. Would you say Michelle is the best fiend? She is one of the bestest fiends. <laughs> Engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters. Trust me, with over 100 million downloads, this five-star rated mobile puzzle game is a must-play. 
Download Best Fiends free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. Also, Tippi Hedren, maybe you don't have a great, you may love animals, and I know you do. Maybe you don't have such a good track record working with them. No. How about you just give money next time? Just go online and fill in a thing, put in your PayPal, and just be done with it. She's like, what's PayPal? It's 1970. <laughs> She's like, I'm dead. Is she dead? I don't know. Oh, baby. I don't think so. Okay. I'm just being positive. Yeah, thank I don't you. think she is, though. No, it's good. We need some levity in these dark times. But here's the thing. Mm-hmm. It made a lot of money. Mm-hmm. I don't think it did. <laughs> uh, it's worldwide gross, excluding the U.S., because it didn't get released in the U.S. <laughs> Was less than $2 million against its $17 million budget. Mm-hmm. Reviews, not good. Mixed. But there's, I guess, one scene where one of the lions is their roommate and mm-hmm. still owes money for rent. And they oh, have to be so like, awkward. hey, listen, Greg, um, uh, damn. do you have Did your... you see that post-it? You <laughs> yeah. Didn't, you like, didn't read it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> um, I know you're over at your girlfriend's a lot, but... Uh, you're also here. <sighs> it's the third of the month and mm. we really need that rent. Yeah. And it's just like a giant paw, just like takes that person's Mom. face and yeah. just like the face comes off. So it was a box office bomb. I mm-hmm. guess, spoiler alert. Bombed big time. Now, Tibby Hedron, in her kind of cosmic ways, had predicted it would be a hit, mm-hmm. projecting a gross of 125 to 150 million. She was way off, I would say. <laughs> she was way off. Maybe don't work with animals. The zero. She didn't, she got, no the, didn't, she got the zero correct. <laughs> uh, and she claimed in 1982 that it was making $1 million a month. It was popular in Germany and Japan, performing well at the box Naturally. office. Naturally. Never received a domestic distribution deal for a U.S. release. Claims that not enough money would be made to reinvest back into the care of the animals. I guess the, the distributors would take too much money. Mm-hmm. Probably because they were just like, we don't care. Yeah. And there are other claims that is because it was a non-union production, so there was no union to call. Oh man, this gets more and more depressing. <laughs> and an opening weekend gross of fifteen thousand dollars on its re-release, which we were part of that yes. money, and ending with a domestic gross of one hundred and ten thousand dollars. So right. that was that was the re-release. And when well, the version we saw, the Draft House Films re-release back in two thousand fifteen, the distributor sold the feature with a tagline. Quote, no animals were harmed in the making of this movie. 70 members of the cast and crew were. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. I, listen, if you need a safe place, we got a brand spanking new bonus episode on our Patreon. Patreon.com slash ghost town pod. Uh, it's there. It's waiting for you. It's pretty spooky. It's pretty creepy. Pretty spooky. Pretty mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah. I would love your feedback. Love your feedback. And we hope everyone's doing well, and you can always message us if you just want to chat or you you're a little, bored. Little something, a little love. It's letter. not because we're lonely. I'm not lonely. We're, you're, uh, I'm not lonely. You shut up. Yeah, yo, you, you should leave. Yes, you are lonely. <laughs> yeah. I am fine. Okay.